Good evening, I'm Senior Chief Vince Dickens and welcome to Icebreaker and tonight we'll be talking once, once again, again about, about, about updates, updates to the base transition process. You can always call in your questions to our in-studio guests at 4613-4614 and 4550. Don't wait till the end of the show, start getting your calls in now. And joining me in the studio as always, Colonel Craig Croxton, Commander of Excellent Defense Force, Captain Mark Lawton, Commanding Officer of Naval Air Station Keflavik, Colonel Philip Gibbons, Commander of 85th Group, and Captain Michael McCartan, Commanding Officer of Naval Hospital Keflavik. Gentlemen, welcome back, uh, mostly to me. I must say I have really enjoyed watching you from the armchair last week. It was really nice. Uh, Colonel Croxton, as always, I'd like to start with you. I know uh, governments are still talking. Things are going on. Sensitive time, I understand. We also have some reporters on base, and we'd like to keep people aware of that. Yeah, sure. We've got uh, quite a few reporters on base because of the, uh, senior, the Airman Hill uh, Article 32 case. So we've got Stars and Stripes, Icelandic media, and so... Uh, just a caution out there to everyone, uh, you know, you shouldn't be speaking to the press unless it's pre-coordinated through your chain of command. So if a microphone gets uh, shoved in your face and someone asks you a question, it's probably prudent just to not answer and just say, uh, you know, I don't have a comment on that. It may, may seem uh, to be a mundane question, easy to answer, but uh, you never know how that can be portrayed or taken out of context. So unless things have been pre-coordinated through your chain of command and through the public affairs office, uh, wiser not to uh, to comment on things. Nice, right, sir. Thank you. And at least for the Air Force uh, side, Colonel Gibbons, we've got what we hope is good news. People, assignments are in and people are starting to move. Yeah, I think that's a, a great uh, good news story. Uh, over the past couple of weeks, as we've been holding icebreakers, it's obviously been a lot of folks' concern that orders were not flowing and that people were not moving. Well, uh, the dam has broken, so to speak, and orders are flowing. I think we're under about two dozen folks that don't have orders or don't have rips at this time on where they're going. So uh, right now the system's kind of adjusting to accept that tremendous amount of folks. Uh, my hat's off to all the folks over at TMO to, to make it happen. Um, I ask only that folks maintain a little bit of good humor and a little bit of patience because the spike is unbelievable, and it will smooth out. Uh, once we get through this lump. But that's really good news that our folks uh, are starting to know where they're going to go and how they're going to get there. Nice, sir. Uh, and for Captain Lund, we were making a lot of just adjustments as we moved through this. I know uh, one of the ones uh, was there were some changes to POV policy. Right. Uh, in the past, we had mentioned that uh, we were going to be trying to have everybody ship their POV in the month that they were PCSing. But just recently, our uh, POV shipper, the contractor there, has... Uh, increase their capacity for us. They've, uh, they've pushed it up quite a bit, actually uh, doubling the capacity. So we have lifted that restriction and are telling folks now, uh, if you want to ship your POV, go over, uh, make your appointment, make the, uh, the process start working for you, and you can get your POV moving uh, within those limitations. So 30 days, 45 days, 60 days, if you want to get your POV shipped so it's on the other end waiting for you, you can make that happen. And in addition to, as people ship their POVs maybe earlier than before, we're also increasing base bus scheduling. Is that right? right. We've, uh, we mentioned that also before. As uh, POVs go away, we wanted to look for a way to provide uh, a little bit of relief from that. We've uh, run that back through the region in Naples and they've approved some funding for us to increase the bus service. It's actually going to come online uh, between now and the end of the month, probably closer to the end of the month, uh, as we uh, make some modifications to contracts and things. But uh, what we're looking at is uh, doing the bus service Monday through Friday from 630 to 1800, and then on uh, Saturdays and Sundays, 12 to 1600. And, of course, as the base adjusts in size uh, and we... Uh, close out facilities, reduce the number of stops that are out there because there's nobody there, that will increase the frequency again. So it will continue to, uh, uh, to get better, I think. Yes, sir. You said funding was important to that. Uh, another funding-related topic, more personal, is some clarification for BAH. BAH, and let's be clear, we're talking about BAH2. Uh, what we've been working for some time now, and it looks like it's finally coming together, is the ability to uh, take sailors and airmen in family housing that move their families uh, back CONUS or to Europe, uh, as the case may be, and then they are here for some period of time. Uh, we wanted to allow them to remain in their family housing unit 
uh, but not penalize them on their, uh, their allowances. So we've got uh, working the process to be able to locally uh, declare family housing units as BQs once the family uh, vacates. That allows the member to then draw what is called BAH2. And let me be very clear on this, folks. You need to understand uh, there is going to be a decrement to your pay. Uh, and it goes something like this. I'll give you an example. This is based upon uh, if a service member were to move their family back to Norfolk and remain in uh, quarters here. Let's take an E3 with uh, two years of service. Your BAH2 in Norfolk is $535 a month. Your BAH1 would be $1,126. So you're taking a decrement there of $591. Of course, when your family departs and you're no longer getting married COLA, you become eligible for, and there are some, uh, some rules uh, that deal with single COLA, but you are possibly eligible for single COLA, and we'll have to approach those each one on a case-by-case -case basis. So while uh, you make the decision, the personal decision to move your family uh, off the base early, uh, you won't suffer an entire loss of your allowances, but it will be decremented somewhat. Another example, just so we uh, spread the gamut out here a little bit, an E7 with 16 years of service BAH2, BA2 in Norfolk is $795 a month. BAH1, i.e. if the service member were living with his family in Norfolk, would be $1,410, $1,410. So there's a difference there or a decrement of $615. And it's that way for every pay grade. There is a difference, but it's not like you're losing all of it. You're getting some of it. Uh, so it does help somewhat. Right. All right, sir, uh, I'm going to pass one down to Colonel Gibbons for shortly. We, we did want to talk about the WIC program a little bit. Right. The WIC program, I think we've been advertising that uh, we were going to terminate that service on 1 July. And just recently, there's been some conversation uh, with the transition uh, executive officer and the folks in the WIC program, and they have slid that out to the right now to, I believe, it's 15 July. So, again, that's an example of uh, a service we think that uh, we can make some modifications to and keep the program running for a little bit longer. And we're doing that with every program, every service that's uh, provided by the base. Uh, the dates that we gave some time ago for the, uh, the community support drawdown, we're still looking at those and seeing where we can make an adjustments. Hopefully moving things to the right, not to the left. But in some cases there may be circumstances driven by uh, manpower or other issues that may slide a few things to the left, but the goal is to, to hold them firm or move them to the right, if at all possible. Yes, sir. And I just wanted to remind everybody, 4613, 4614, and 4550 are the numbers you need to call. Um, get your questions in. And uh, Colonel Gibbons, we actually had a couple of Air Force questions come in uh, in the last few minutes regarding people concerns about the move. Yeah, there's, there's two questions here uh, on two different topics. The first one is uh, company personnel living in May, leaving in May. So cannot express baggage shipments, uh, cannot ship, I guess, their express baggage because they say the TMO is booked. And so what are the other options? Uh, in this case, it looks like the individual needs to ship a crib and some other baby items. Uh, first off, uh, let me say we need to ensure that the TMO is indeed booked. And so I ask that uh, individuals do contact if they, uh, their squadron commander and let us uh, make sure that that is indeed the right answer. Um, the TMO have been very accommodating, and right now, uh, at my level, I haven't been notified that they have turned any TMO shipments back. I think what is happening there is on some of these short notice orders that uh, uh, the people are getting their full shipment, but they're running up against some of the difficulty of splitting out and having different shipping dates. Uh, so uh, I'm assuming that's what that is. I'm sure my folks are in the back. I brought my... Uh, household goods expert with me if there's something different there that I'm missing, they'll yeah. pass it on to us. I think we need to get the answer on that because what I was briefed is that what they were looking to do was you may get the same date for both yeah. your, for both a, uh, a baggage shipment and your, right. your household goods, but they're going to pick it up at the same time. But yep. if you're that's not the, true. You're going to get the same allowance. 
If that's not true, we'll, we'll get that word out. But the other options that you do have, uh, obviously there's an allowance to mail uh, what you can. Uh, Diddy Move is also an option for those that are going to uh, the UK, of course. And then last, if uh, all those don't work, uh, I'm sure that we can uh, support a power of attorney so that we can get your express shipment out. That will probably, I would expect, beat your, your household goods. But uh, we need to find out exactly who those are and make sure that we ask uh, the right question. Yeah, and I would just say that power of attorney is probably uh, a very good option in those situations where because of this big spike that we're throwing at the household goods folks, uh, that is probably a good route to go. Uh, get the power of attorney and have somebody else do that for you. Mm -hmm. That's the uh, one question. The other has it is rumor has it that personnel won't move to billeting and uh, and they'll be able to stay in housing before the PCS. What about TLA? Uh, I think the financial folks will have to back me up on that one. But as long as you're in housing, you're probably not authorized temporary living allowance, which is of course to cover moving into a hotel or moving somewhere else. So. Um, as long as you're in government quarters, and I expect the TLA is in Iceland, if your family's with you, is uh, not going to be authorized. And I believe that's correct. I believe that's correct, but we will research that as well, and we'll get those answers posted on our website and update that if that is not correct. And then I'll slip the third card while we're pondering the first two questions, and it says, will Air Force receive priority housing at the next duty station? Uh, we've been working this issue very hard uh, since the last icebreaker, and this question was mentioned. Um, and as we went out and asked if folks uh, were not getting the priority they thought they needed or they were having problems with housing at the other end, we asked them to elevate that and come up through their squadron commanders. We've heard of probably less than a handful of cases where that has happened. And so what I've asked is for my commanders to work that directly with the gaining commander to see and explain the situation that we have here at Keflavik to see if we can't work some sort of uh, uh, solution that uh, is fair to both the folks departing here in, in a short time frame and of course not bumping out folks at the other end, you know, that's, uh, that wouldn't be fair. So with the work together to come up with a, a fair solution. If that doesn't uh, solve the issue, then the commanders have been uh, authorized to bring it up to my level and we'll talk to the mission support group commander at the gaining base and, uh, and work to make sure that, uh, again, that they're handled in a fair manner. And that's all I have right now. Nice, sir. And this is, it's not, it's not a housing question, but a similar question, but what happens if your dependents leave ahead of time? Yeah, it, the question is if you, uh, if you're going to move your family out early and you're going to be staying here for a while, uh, likely because of a requirement of your uh, critical skill set, would you be able to get reimbursed before your PCS travel voucher? Uh, I'll have to ask, uh, Chief Eubanks that question, uh, I'm trying to think back. I don't recall a situation where I've ever been in like that, but just my gut would tell me uh, until you liquidate uh, your travel voucher on your PCS move, you probably can't. But we'll, we'll verify that and ask that question of Chief Eubanks. Oh, this is just uh, from your household good experts about uh -oh. the... Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, the number of moves versus the number of spots uh, means only one date, and that's the question you got. Uh, packers cannot separate the shipments. Uh, if this is a large impact, we'll work it case by case. So I think that's it. I think it's this initial crunch of these folks that got very short notice orders uh, that's causing this spike and the number of uh, uh, the number of packers available to try to separate out and do separate shipments. But we can we can take a look at that. Okay. Folks are going to have to, uh, you know, I, I know you've heard this before, and, and we've all, uh, we've said it just about every week. Uh, you're going to have to work with us and help us. This is a pretty unusual circumstance, mm -hmm. and we're doing what we can to make this as smooth as possible. Uh, the idea has always been uh, get your stuff out of here, uh, get you, your family, and your pets uh, out of here, and your POV. Uh, we're going to have to work some of the... Uh, uh, some of the harder spots to, to soften them up a little bit, but uh, the goal is to get you out of here and onto your next duty station. Yeah, I think the uh, the point here, this individual that asked the question, uh, very understanding. They're looking to ship a crib and other baby items, and I can understand that uh, that concern. So um, hopefully we'll be able to work uh, with that individual yeah. to see if we can't separate and get a, an express shipment at a later date. All right, sir. Thank you.
Uh, don't forget, 4613-4614-4550, the number to get your questions answered. Uh, and now I wanted to turn to Captain McCartan. I know that the hospital, you said, has made some adjustments uh, to their after-hours care, that, for, which might be different from what we've been putting out before. Yeah, thanks, Senior. Uh, here, in, uh, on the 2nd of June, we are going to be converting from hospital to clinic, and, and that we've been putting out all along, and that is unchanged. Uh, the intention initially was that we were going to uh, have folks uh, seek after-hours care if it was indicated uh, on the economy in Keflavik. And we've reworked that plan, and I think it's going to be uh, with our staffing and equipment, we, we've sort of changed our uh, egress mm -hmm. such that we will support after-hours care here on base. So what we'll be doing is uh, asking folks that if, after we close the doors at 1800, um, if there is a question related to your health, if you have uh, a, you know, a concern or something has developed and you want to talk to us, uh, the uh, urgent care clinic, the number that we've had here all along is 3300-3300. Uh, Commander Little tells me that number will have life till uh, 30 September. And if you call us at 3300, uh, we will then uh, you know, triage it. Uh, we'll make uh, decisions whether we should have you seen then, the next morning, if there is advice, we can give you over the telephone at that time, either through the nursing triage or through the uh, physician that's on call. So just a complete paradigm change. We've just decided it's going to be uh, much more accommodating, a much more uh, smooth transition if we can just go from the hospital to the clinic but keep the after-hours care on base. Hey, sir, you want people to help you out by remembering to pick up their x-rays, is that? Exactly, yeah. A couple of other points uh, from the hospital perspective. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I, I put out the request that people um, be in touch and come through the hospital to pick up a hard copy of x-rays, mammograms, and, and other studies. And people have been quite diligent. Uh, we, our racks are probably about 70% empty. Uh, but it's that other 30% we want to make sure people have the studies that they need before they depart. Um, there may be some people who are... Uh, you know, not on base after hours and maybe not watching Icebreaker, uh, and we'll take care of that through other means. But if you are here on base and uh, can come through the hospital, please do that. Um, something else that we've been mentioning here is the spike that we've had recently in terms of the Air Force orders coming through. Uh, as I've asked and as the base population has been very diligent about doing, is coming through for overseas screenings. Uh, I know on the Navy side there's not been a lot of overseas activity. Most uh, of the folks are returning to uh, continental United States. But a lot of the Air Force orders are going into England and further into Europe. So there are overseas screens uh, for many of these orders that have just popped. As a result, um, our clinic schedules are sort of being consumed by um, overseas screenings. And what we'll be doing is, uh, as we have folks coming in, uh, we will probably be prioritizing uh, by their departure date in terms of when we'll schedule them for their actual overseas screening. We've been trying to take care of it right then and there, get them scheduled, and just to be uh, wise about the use of our clinic time, uh, we'll be sort of stacking those up and prioritizing them. But rest assured, I thank you for coming through for your overseas screenings, and uh, we will get you in. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, you all, I did want to mention, uh, we wanted to talk about TRICARE a little bit, just another reminder for people in getting, uh, getting your TRICARE. Just uh, TRICARE, uh, I've been beating that drum here every show that we've had, um, and actually the TRICARE expert at the hospital uh, enlightened me a little bit this week in terms of one of the risks of not checking out. Uh, and basically, if you were to not check out here in Keflavik and then go through to the States and have to be seen, you would run the risk of receiving the bill for the health care that you receive during your transit. So if you officially can come through and check out with us, it's going to serve you much better and you'll avoid any possibility of getting a bill. Um, the other thing is that uh, there is a very informative uh, one-page handout that I've passed out electronically to the leadership on base, and they're going to be getting it down the chains of command. And it's a fabulous summary of the rules of the road for TRICARE, including those uh, toll-free numbers that I mentioned that you would call over in the States. So rather than bore people with numbers and telephone numbers to jot down at this point in time, mm -hmm. uh, we are forwarding them here to uh, the station. We're going to have them posted on Channel 21, hopefully by tomorrow. And uh, you'll also be briefed on this particular handout when you come through to check out. So just uh, with TRICARE, um, make sure you check out with us here in Keflavik before you move on, and it will serve you well. All right, sir. 
We've had what we call a, a micro stack or a micro flood of uh, cards here, which is great. Uh, Colonel Gibbons, I was going to start with you. They had um, the first one I saw came through had to do with a person who was leaving in May, uh, looking for some some priority. Right, perhaps. and and the actual question is the personnel leaving in May and has not yet received orders. Will they get priority to ship a vehicle before personnel leaving in June? Um, as I think you heard earlier, our, our ability to ship vehicles has expanded greatly. Um, not necessarily will you get priority, but I don't think it'll be required. With our capacity that we, we just found out about at the beginning of the show, you should not have a problem, should not uh, have a problem with getting your car shipped before you depart Iceland. Now, uh, I guess what I need to know is this individual leaving like in a few days and they don't have orders yet, and is there a ship available? That may not uh, be the case, but uh, based on the information we have, uh, we just received this morning, that there should not be a problem. What we've got to do is when the person has their written orders, we've got to get them hooked up over at uh, uh, the POV shipper. And uh, although it may not be on a ship leaving before they do, if we can get it processed, then it'll be sitting there waiting to be loaded on the next ship. Yeah, and it'll go on the next ship. So I think that'll make, I think that will, uh, that will answer their question and, uh, and work to their needs. The second question says, if Air Force wants to, if an Air Force member wants to move into billeting, or off-base hotel before PCS, will they be authorized uh, and receive TLA? I guess that's another way to come at the same question. Um, I believe that uh, the rules state that if uh, government quarters are, are available, um, then uh, that uh, it would be where you would reside. And if it's still in your own quarters, then you wouldn't be authorized TLA, just like we said before. Our problem, of course, is the number of folks moving um, billeting is probably at max capacity. Uh, obviously, everybody's noticed we still have F-15s flying and, and, and others here that are occupying, uh, occupying rooms. So there's just no way that uh, billeting can, uh, can handle everybody. And that's why we have this exception that allows them to stay in their, in their house until they leave. Uh, I don't think we've, unless I'm uh, mistaken, have we put people in hotels off base prior to PCS? -ing? Uh, not to my knowledge. Not to my knowledge. <clears throat> that uh, that does that has not happened. So uh, the answer is no. Uh, again, if uh, we've got government quarters, then uh, that's where it would be best to to leave you until you PCS out. Um, the third question I have is: It says if a military member PCSs before their family, how can the family get from the airport to the base? Will they be authorized? A rental car. Um, I guess I, I, we'll need to get more research on this. My, uh, it says I'm trying to understand if they're asking, will they be uh, if they leave first? Will their family be able to get uh, from the base to the airport? Um, uh, given that the military member uh, has already PCS and uh, the family uh, can obviously rent a car, but I don't believe that's reimbursable, but uh, they can take a taxi to the airport and that would be reimbursable per the normal PCS rotation. So uh, they just need to submit those, keep the, uh, get, make sure they get a receipt and then submit that with their travel vouchers. And that's all that I have. That's all right, Captain Lawton has another pile for us. Right, there's a question here about uh, personnel getting out of the military and wants to know if they can uh, make shipments through the post office to a location other than their home of record. Uh, we'll have to ask PSD that to get a definitive answer, but I would imagine uh, when you are getting out of the Navy, everything is generally directed toward your home of record. So I would expect that to be the answer, but we will uh, we'll run that one down. Uh, again, we're getting the question about will the rotator be coming back? No, at this time it is not. Uh, we've run the numbers. We've uh, been talking with the folks at uh, Transcom and AMC and right now there is not a plan to bring the rotator back or at least not a definitive date to bring the rotator back. We're tracking that uh, weekly, looking at uh, our ability to acquire Iceland Air tickets going both east and west and uh, as soon as we see a problem with that, AMC has uh, indicated to us they will turn on a service to us, whether it will be a, a weekly rotator or whether it will be something uh, uh, a little more uh, less frequently scheduled, uh, we'll just have to wait and see. But right now we think we've got that covered with the ice air, at least into the uh, uh, late June, July timeframe. It's a question about uh, 
if a dependent purchases tickets, airline tickets I'm assuming, with their own money to go to the next duty station before the sponsor, will they be reimbursed? Uh, I believe under Navy rules, and I'm not sure about Air Force rules, but I believe under Navy rules, you're not eligible to be reimbursed for that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the same old thing about purchasing, uh, uh, you know, like the female travel. We do it through, uh, through SATO, or you've got to have something that gives you authorization prior to purchasing your ticket uh, to go outside of the normal pattern. So uh, my, my initial answer is no, you would not. And then the question on when will the veterinarian uh, clinic be on base or when will the veterinarian be here? Currently, the, uh, the Army vet is here until May the 12th. They're working out of Hangar 831, room 26, and they're planning to come back in the June time frame, June the 6th through the 15th. If you need to uh, make an appointment to see the Army vet, uh, the number is uh, DSM. I know this sounds a little strange. This is for uh, out in the... Uh, the later time frame, if you will, in June. Uh, DSN 341-226-7377. Uh, and if you need to see them now, uh, I would suggest you pop over to uh, Hangar 831 and see if they have any availability. Right. Looks like the question pool has temporarily dried up. 4613-4614-4550 to get your questions in. Uh, Captain Lawton, I did want to um, go over again if in the near, very near future, in the next few weeks, I know there were some things that were already scheduled according to our timeline mm -hmm. to be short, uh, shutting down or uh, curtailing. A lot of it over in the Viking Mall area. Right. Uh, I just wanted to know if there was any, uh, if we could reiterate some of those or update some of those. Right. I, I think everybody's aware that uh, on May the 12th, the Navy College is shutting down. Also, on May the 12th, Cafetar in the uh, Navy Exchange is going to be terminating its contract with us mm -hmm. and will be closing. And that's just Friday. So, I mean, that's yep. this, this get your uh, cappuccino now. <laughs> uh, the 27th of May, the beauty shop will be closing. 31 May, we're going to uh, reduce the uniform shop, uh, the flower shop, your broadcast AM, uh, and the skating rink will be closed. Skating rink uh, open by appointment only for special events. Uh, we've already seen, or should have seen, uh, the optical shop closed, the barber shop reduced its hours. Uh, I think uh, Monday through Friday closed on Saturday and Sunday. And then of course as we get into June, uh, the schools close and there's a whole bunch of other things that start to happen uh, toward the latter part of June. Let me remind folks that uh, uh, June 21st is the date that you need to pick up your school records for your children. Uh, if you haven't already gotten them, June 21st is that date. I heard there was actually a ceremony uh, planned, or uh, not, not the graduation ceremony, I mean just uh, sort of a close down the school ceremony, but I just heard that in the wind. I was right, there, there's actually a, uh, a graduation ceremony this Saturday. Uh, there's two high school students that are leaving before the, is it June 9th? June 7th. Uh, June 7th graduation date. And so they're holding a graduation ceremony for them uh, Saturday uh, evening, and I think that's at the base chapel at 1900. Uh, and yes, there is a, uh, a commemorative ceremony being planned uh, for the school, for, at the elementary school I know of. I'm not sure about the high school. And uh, help me out here. I think it's the 9th Yeah, both June. the 9th. Is the June the 9th? Both the elementary school and the high school have a ceremony, a closing ceremony planned. Okay. One's in the a.m. and one's in the, in the p.m. Right. And the high school kids will be joining Viking Fest uh, this Friday. So as things are drawing down, there's still things happening. So uh, uh, anyway, we did get one other phone call. Don't forget, uh, we'll, we'll be uh, wrapping up soon, not right away. We still have some things to talk about, but we wanted to make sure that uh, you didn't wait till the last minute. And 4613, 14, and 4550 as always. This one is about the uh, loaner locker kits. Right. Will there be enough loaner locker kits to go around for everyone PCSing at the end of May? Uh, we hope there is. Uh, but I would not necessarily count on it, and that ought to be part of your planning. We talked about this before. You may want to keep a few of those items around that uh, you need to get by. Uh, yeah. I know I've been over to the, the mini mart and to the commissary and picked up a few extra paper plates and a few little plastic utensils uh, to make sure that, uh, you know, that Boy Scout motto, be prepared, uh, to make sure I've got things to, uh, to carry my family through some of these periods. 
I know when I watched last week, one of the questions that had come up and had come up before was about you know the commissary and the shelves and all of that. I, mm -hmm. I know this last week when I was on leave and walked over there, there was food there, so I, I guess I go on the right days. or. Well, the uh, we've had some trouble uh, with the ships uh, coming in. They've been experiencing some uh, maintenance delays, and it's been sporadic. We haven't been able to have our our timing such of the shipments arriving that we keep a steady flow of uh, merchandise on the on the shelves. We did get uh, one of the shipments in. We got an air shipment in and uh, leveled that out just a little bit, but we continue to have problems with the shipper. Uh, therefore, we've gone to uh, things like purchasing our produce uh, off the local economy. Uh, I think folks should appreciate that. Yes, it costs a little bit more. Uh, I remind folks that it is subsidized somewhat by DECA. So we're not paying the full Icelandic price, uh, and it is pretty good produce. I've uh, I've been over there and had a little bit myself. Yes, sir. Uh, this is a follow-up question. Not really a follow-up question. It's a it's an amplifying question about packouts and uh, trying to get some boxes ahead of in advance of having an appointment. Right. Uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, you need to have a packout date established because that gets you into the system and get your name on the roster, so to speak, with the, uh, the three household goods packers. Once they have you in that system, then you can go over and say, I am Petty Officer Smith, and I'd like to get some boxes, some tape, some packing material, and you can get it at that time. Uh, if, you are, if, if you are anticipating short notice orders and need to work that system a little bit different, uh, we can look at that, but uh, I think folks should fairly well be taken care of if they just uh, wait till they're into the system. All right, sir. I'm looking over my shoulder to see if we have questions in the wings, and, and we do not. Um, before we do our general round of closing remarks, uh, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing anybody who had uh, some other things that they still wanted to talk about. That, in other words, I don't want to rush the show. I'm in a hurry. So um, was there any other uh, topics that uh, we wanted to cover in case another question wants to sneak in under the wire like they do? Say, how about that weather? It's, we'll have to make it so icebreakers never, never on a sunny day ever. So we'll have to make sure we're not here. Okay. Well, then in that case, maybe we can just start with our our final closing comments, like we like to do, Colonel Croxton. Oh, maybe not. That's all right. It's always somebody. This is an Air Force question. So. Oh. Had that one planted. Yeah, so the question was, can you get excess baggage put on your orders since the limit has gone down to 50 pounds? Uh, the answer, I believe, is yes, and you just need to contact your squadron commander to go ahead and authorize excess baggage uh, uh, if needed, and he should be able to do that. That was an easy one. <laughs> All right, Colonel Crackley. Yeah, as the, as the spike hits us right now and, and we're starting that, that big push, uh, a little bit more stress is, is creeping into our lives, and uh, we've already mentioned work with us, uh, you know, put on a thick skin and, and realize everything's not going to be perfect. But what I wanted to let you know is that uh, if you think that we're doing this alone here on the little island, uh, the island of Iceland, uh, it's not true. The, the people in D.C., um, Secretary Rumsfeld's staff, they know about what we're going through, and they take every opportunity in D.C., to uh, express the, the aggravation and some of the frustration that we're uh, feeling. And I think that's evidenced by uh, all the extra support and the waivers and the, the, the way things are being handled here. So uh, the people in the, in the five-sided uh, puzzle palace, they know uh, what's going on and how decisions that have been made are actually affecting the individual sailor and the airman. So it, uh, our plight is not uh, going unnoticed. All right, sir. Thank you. Colonel Gibbons? I'd just like to reiterate, like I said at the beginning, I think we're getting through the bow wave, if isn't that a Navy term? Uh, we're getting through the bow wave on all this and that hopefully the things will start to smooth out. I echo again Colonel Croxton's comments that we need a little patience to, to go ahead and, and make that happen. Um, I think that, uh, that it'll get a lot, to, a lot easier as we go through the next couple weeks and, and we get all the different perturbations uh, uh, ironed out. What I do ask folks is don't necessarily wait for the icebreaker. Of course, this is a great format to, to answer questions, but uh, our website is still up. We're still monitoring that. 
So please submit your questions there. We will go ahead and research them and get you the answer back on that. Um, also, if that doesn't work, then please elevate them through the commanders. Uh, we still meet with the commanders daily, and, and they have the direct line to me if they can't get an issue resolved for you. So please, please take advantage of those avenues as well and not just wait for icebreakers. Well, yeah, I believe bow wave is the old Navy term. The new one we're using is pig through the snake. Is, is oh, yeah, what, pig what through a snake. Yeah, that's, that's what we mean. Oh, I'm sorry. Captain Lawton. Let me just remind folks, uh, continue to be safe uh, in all that we're doing. We are literally now starting to get into the heavy lifting. And uh, I say that a little bit tongue in cheek, but uh, frankly, folks are starting to move a lot of stuff right now. And uh, I know my, my good friend sitting to my left here, Captain McCartan, uh, doesn't want to see anybody else coming in over there uh, with strained backs or, or strained muscles from not, uh, not following proper safety precautions. Uh, smash toes, smash fingers, uh, all those things are uh, liable to happen if we start taking shortcuts or uh, bypassing the procedures that we have in place. So just encourage folks as we head into uh, the longer days of summer, although uh, most of us are working most of those daylight hours, uh, do look out for each other, do be careful, and uh, you know everybody is empowered to say stop until we figure it out if it looks like we're gonna do something that's gonna hurt somebody. All right, sir, thank you very much. And Captain McCartney. Well, I guess, first of all, as we've put out here, that from the hospital perspective, everything that we've asked uh, the base population to do or to get ahead of or be proactive on, uh, they've done a fabulous job. So I just wanna thank everybody. We're busy. There's a lot going on, but thank you all for uh, keeping your eye on the ball. Uh, and my closing message uh, that I planned as I was driving over this evening is exactly what Captain Lawton just put out. Uh, we at the hospital, we've just started to have the first folks checking out. Uh, we are now starting to stage gear to get ready to start moving. Mm -hmm. uh, we had 18 pallets of uh, material for the humanitarian assistance program uh, leave our warehouse last Friday. Uh, so we are into that action period and we just need to be very careful uh, to take care of ourselves. Uh, in this kind of environment, uh, just a little bit of uh, over exuberance uh, could be uh, a big problem. So just ask people to please be safe. Uh, use the various facilities that you need to uh, vent your uh, frustration or your extra energy. Um, but let's get through this in one piece. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thank you, gentlemen, again for joining me. I'm sure we'll be right back here next week at the same time. Uh, and, and thank you for joining us as well. If you know someone who said, hey, I missed Icebreaker, don't forget that we do re-air this uh, Thursdays at 1800, 6 p.m. on Channel 21. Uh, so if they missed it tonight for any reason, they, they have a second chance. Or if you want to tape it, it's another good chance to do that. Set your VCR. But from all of us here at AFN, have a great night, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>